it's important to conserve the habitats of chimpanzees because they almost all live in rainforests and rainforests are one of the great lungs of the world. They absorb carbon dioxide, they give us oxygen, they give us clean air and clean water. And in addition to that, chimpanzees are our closest living relatives and we still have such a lot to learn from them. And what will our great-grandchildren say if there are no more chimpanzees? They will feel how shocking that we let these amazing and wonderful beings become extinct. The most important thing that I've discovered about chimpanzee behavior, along with all the other studies, is how like us they are. And we know biologically they're our closest living relatives. We share 98.6% of the composition of DNA. But understanding how like us they are in so many ways helps us to stand back and say, yes, but we're different. What is the main difference? And I think it's the explosive development of our intellect. So yes, chimpanzees are way more intelligent than we used to think, as are so many other animals. But it doesn't compare with a brain that sent a rocket to Mars from which crept a little robot taking photographs of the surface of the red planet. We don't want to go and live on Mars. And yet we're destroying our only home, this beautiful green and blue planet. And it seems there's been a disconnect between the clever brain and the human heart, love and compassion. I think the study of chimpanzees has helped us to understand where we came from and the fact that we share with them gestures and postures of communication like kissing, embracing, holding hands, patting one another on the back, but also tendencies to violence, aggression and war as well as love and compassion. So it helps us to better understand where we've gone wrong and what we should be doing about it. Unfortunately, the situation of chimpanzees across their range in Africa has deteriorated terribly since I began studying the Gombe chimpanzees in 1960. Uh, but everywhere where JGI has worked, which is Tanzania, Uganda, DRC, Republic of Congo, Senegal, the situation of the chimpanzees and their forest habitat has very, very definitely improved. And it's a sure thing that if, if I hadn't begun my work in 1960 in Gombe, there would be no chimpanzees there at all. When I discovered in the mid-60s the speed with which chimpanzees across Africa were disappearing and the fact that forests right across their range were being destroyed, that's when I realized I needed to go to Africa and try and learn more about their plight. And I did, but in doing so, I also learned about the plight of so many people living in and around chimpanzee habitat, the crippling poverty, the lack of good health and education facilities, the degradation of the land. And when I flew over the tiny Gombe National Park, that's only 35 square kilometers, I was shocked it had been part of the equatorial forest belt stretching across Africa, which is now in increasingly small fragments. But Gombe was surrounded by completely bare hills with more people living there than the land could support. And I realized if we didn't do something to help the people find ways of living without destroying the environment, then we couldn't even try to save the chimpanzees. So we began our program, our method of community-based conservation, which we call Take Care or Tokari, by sending not a group of arrogant white people into the villages around Gombe, telling them what we were going to do to make things better for them, but a team of carefully selected local people 
who went into the 12 villages around Gombe and listened to the people and asked them what they thought we could do to make their lives better. So that's where we started. And gradually, as the villagers came to trust us, Takari turned into a really holistic program which involved restoration and protection of forests. It involved helping the people restore fertility to their land, working with the local Tanzanian authorities to improve health and education facilities, introducing water management programs, and finally, what I think really important, the microcredit opportunities based on Mohammed Yunus's Grameen Bank. And so we were empowering women. We also provided family planning information. And thanks to the clinics for women and children, people began to realize their babies weren't going to die. And so they were eagerly accepted this family planning information. So successful has Takari been. It's now in 104 villages throughout the chimpanzee range in Tanzania. Very important because almost all of those chimpanzees are out in village forest reserves. And now we have forest monitors selected from those villages as volunteers who learn to use smartphones. They indicate the health of their forests and they've become our partners in conservation. I think that more people around the world are beginning to understand that climate change is in part due to the destruction of the natural world. So forests and oceans, the two great lungs of the world, being destroyed, being polluted, so they can no longer do their jobs. And unless you conserve the wildlife and the wild plants of an ecosystem, that ecosystem will collapse. We are part of the natural world. We're not separate from it. We depend on it for our own future. People often ask me what I'm proudest of in my work with, with the chimpanzees. I think it helps us to understand ourselves a little better, a little bit less arrogant perhaps. We're not, after all, the only beings on the planet with personalities, minds and emotions. But even more importantly, that has helped science to stop thinking in this reductionist way that the difference between us and all the other animals is one of kind. And now we can actually have students studying animal emotions, animal personality, and certainly animal intellect. When I went to get my PhD, I was told I shouldn't mention those things because they were unique to us. It's almost impossible for me to understand how there can be people in the world of shared information today who actually don't understand that in destroying the environment, uh, we're destroying our own future. And this is why so many young people seem to have lost hope. It's why I started our program for young people, Roots and Shoots, back in 1991. And there's a saying, we haven't inherited this planet from our parents, we borrowed it from our children. In point of fact, we have been stealing their future. And people simply must realize that destroying the planet for short-term gain is destroying the future of our own species as well as all the other species with whom we share the planet. For many years now, I've been saying that the the main reason I have for hope is the young people. And yes, there are hundreds of young people marching on the streets today. Our Roots and Shoots students have been working for the environment for many, many years now. Many of those are now adult, taking their place in adult society, making decisions, keeping the values they learned 
during our Roots and Shoots program. So they are my main reason for hope. Young people, when they understand the problems, are empowered to take action, when we listen to their voices, actually are changing the world and making it better for people, for animals, for the environment, because everything is interconnected. Well, obviously, I'm very, very honoured to receive this award, and it's based on the work of the Jane Goodall Institute. We have JGIs in, in 34 countries. We have a Jane Goodall Institute Global. And so this award is really honouring all the hard work that so many people have put into our programmes. And it's a further proof that what we've been doing is significant, is important, and is valued. In other words, we're getting things right.